Swayam Prabha Digital India Educated India Today we learned about porphyrias. What is porphyrias? The objective of the class will be to understand the different types of porphyrias, to know the biochemical basis of clinical presentation in porphyrias, application of the knowledge of heme synthesis in the treatment of porphyrias. First of all, what is porphyrias? Porphyrias are nothing but congenital or acquired defects in the synthesis of heme in our body. So, they can lead to severe disturbing symptoms because of the precursors or intermediates of this uh, heme synthesis are highly photoreactive and can cause severe cutaneous manifestation on exposure to sunlight and they can also cause serious neurological manifestations which is very disturbing to the patient. So, it is very imperative to know about what are the different types of porphyrias and how they can be treated. So, porphyrias are nothing but inherited metabolic disorders caused by deficiency of the enzyme of heme biosynthetic pathway. I say inherited, it need not be always. Sometimes there is one more category is called as acquired porphyrias also exist. What are they? We try to learn today. So, what exactly happens here is the accumulation of this precursors in the heme synthesis pathway and uh, which can lead to severe cutaneous neuropsychiatric symptoms including severe abdominal pain. So, you look at this picture, we have on the left hand side, we have a normal urine, on right hand side a urine which looks like blood. So, one of the easiest uh, test is to keep the urine exposed for some time and it turns uh, darker on some time. This is basically because of porphyrins, if at all they are present in too much quantity in the urine. As I mentioned, they are very photoreactive substances. They will get oxidized and they can lead to some red color formation. Same is the basis for identification of porphyrias. What they do is uh, porphyrins, if at all you think that the porphyrins are there, in a sample they will dissolve in a strong mineral acid or organic solvents and when they are exposed to UV rays they will emit a red color fluorescence. So, which is the basis of diagnosis of porphyrias in the any fluid. So, this is basically because of the uh, methanol bridges which are joining the tetrapylol ring they are responsible for this fluorescence which emit this red color fluorescence on exposure to UV rays which are very much present in our sunlight. So, these are some photographs to show that cutaneous manifestation you can see especially they occur in exposed areas of our body that means whichever the sunlight is falling if whenever we wear clothes uh, uh, which are uh, which not exposed areas they are safeguarded from these reactions. This is a very typical symptom. If you have any skin infection, otherwise other than porphyria, they should occur in anywhere in the body. This is very unique that if you see a rash or uh, infection like rash like this, which is present only in exposed areas, there is a first clue to think that it uh, need not be a simple skin infection, it may be a rash because of the photosensitivity. Similarly, you can see these are all occurring in exposed area. This is an hand, you can see multiple red color blister like uh, rashes. 
and uh, you can see the face and around the lips the skin has been totally deformed and hardened because of repeated uh, ex uh, because constant exposure to the sun and which leads to severe um, inflammatory reaction and lot of uh, fibrosis in the uh, subcutaneous tissue and connective tissue basically because of porphyrins interacting with sunlight and releasing free radicals causing this reaction. So, based on the presentation for our understanding, porphyrias can be divided into acute and chronic. Acute means those present with a very severe manifestations and really disturbing. So, they usually come with the abdominal pain, sometimes along with vomiting and uh, increased heartbeat or tachycardia that means the and including increased blood pressure that is basically because of the uh, 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 the reactions which is going through the pain is going through that creates a tension in the patient and that leads to his increased heart rate and hypertension. Motor neuropathy sometimes so much so to cause paralysis like attack in all the four limbs and uh, of course, sometimes you can get uh, fits or seizures which may lead up to a comatose like situation. And uh, sometimes psychological manifestation which are short lived such like anxiety, confusion, hallucinations. Hallucinations means a person is visualizing something which is does not exist. So, these are all sometimes unfortunately are not diagnosed because they usually uh, tendency the doctor or clinicians feel that it may be related to tension or stress because these are symptoms are not very confined to one system. When you say abdominal pain for this example, if you actually do the abdominal scan in this patient or actually do abdominal examination or a CT scan, MRI scan whatever you do, you will not find any fault then uh, the doctor feels that this uh, patient uh, may be simply telling because of some stress. So, most of our time unfortunately, these patients will not be diagnosed early. They will go from one doctor to other with these symptoms and uh, most of our time doctor feels it is a stress and most of the time they will give them uh, anxiolytic or antidepressants medications. So, the example for acute porphyrias include acute intermittent porphyria, variegate porphyria, ALA dehydratase deficiency porphyria, hereditary coproporphyria. When I say acute, there should be chronic porphyria. Unlike the acute category, chronic porphyrias you will not have any severe manifestations and it will not very much disturbing to the patient. So, the example for this chronic porphyria in include X linked dominant protoporphyria, congenital erythropoietic porphyria, porphyria cutanea tarda, erythropoietic protoporphyria. None of these are associated with acute attacks. The, some of them may present with some simple skin rashes or skin diseases. So, since some of these porphyrias whether acute or chronic have predominantly present as skin manifestations for just for our understanding, we can also categorize as a separate category called as cutaneous porphyrias. Cutaneous porphyrias are those one which predominantly present with the skin manifestations. These may be either acute or chronic. So, example for them is congenital erythropoietic porphyria, porphyria cutanea tarda, erythropoietic protoporphyria along with 
these are actually comes under chronic porphyrias which I already just now told two of the acute porphyrias namely variegate porphyria and hereditary coproporphyria also predominantly present with the cutaneous manifestations hence they are categorized as cutaneous porphyrias. Now let us see in this table as you can see the first three and the symptom wise you can see one thing is missing they are very vague symptom all of the porphyrias in the light most column you can see most of them have some very vague uh, symptoms like uh, either psychological symptoms uh, visceral pain abdominal pain neurological manifestations uh, any time you do any of these uh, investigations blood test or x-ray scan none of them will be showing any positive report so out of which uh, first three that is x linked uh, uh, dominant uh, protoporphyria ala dehydratase deficiency porphyria and acute intermittent porphyria they will not have any photosensitive or cutaneous manifestations. The reason being I already mentioned their porphyrins are formed from the step where the uh, uh, uroporphyr the open chain hydroxymethyl bilane in the heme synthesis pathway uh, by condensation it forms a cyclical structure called as uroporphyrin that is the first ever porphyrin formed in the entire pathway only porphyrins which has a closed link structure are having photosensitivity any intermediates accumulated above will not cause photosensitive reactions so as you can see if you remember the pathway any of these pathways any enzymes is defective the substrate for that enzyme gets accumulated in the blood and which is responsible for various manifestations and you can also see some of this uh, porphyrias also comes with the uh, gallstone formation this is uh, nothing but accumulation because of this uh, too much of hemolysis is occurring ineffective erythropoiesis is occurring and uh, these will uh, uh, that uh, uh, ineffective uh, the heme which is unwantedly moving it gets uh, degraded into bilirubin and some of them may also have increased bilirubin and this bilirubin or the bile pigment we call sometimes can cause gallstones called as pigment gallstones even though the predominant uh, category of the gallstones seen in any individual is a cholesterol gallstones. Now let us try to understand each of these porphyrias by revisiting heme synthesis pathway. So first let us uh, try to highlight the acute porphyrias because they are very important because they are causing severe manifestations and which are very disturbing to the patient. So as I already mentioned the out of the acute porphyrias ALA dehydratase porphyria. So you can see it uh, the enzyme required for conversion of ALA to porphobilinogen. So still uh, this uh, is uh, what is happening is whenever this enzyme is deficient so the ALA is getting accumulated unwantedly in the system but since it is not a porphyrin there will not be any photosensitivity. So next uh, acute category of porphyria is acute intermittent porphyria. So the as the as you clearly see here the enzyme which is absent here is 
PBG deaminase or porphobilogen deaminase which forms hydroxy methyl bilane. Here again you can see here uh, whatever the product accumulated is porphobilinogen and hence it is not at porphyrin. So, it is also does not have photosensitivity. Next acute porphyria is hereditary coproporphyria. Unlike the previous two, here you can see the coproporphyrinogen, it means porphyrin is already formed. So, this is accumulated and it cannot, con the enzyme defect here is coproporphyrinogen 3 oxidase. So, this occurs in the mitochondria. So, this enzyme is defective. So, this causes the severe photosensitivity and it is a one of the category of acute types of porphyria. And the last of uh, this uh, acute porphyria is variegate porphyria. This is because of defect in protoporphyrinogen, protoporphyrin 3 oxidase which converts protoporphyrinogen 3 to protoporphyrin 9. This is again occurring in the mitochondria and this also comes with the severe skin manifestations and photosensitivity. So, totally we had 4 acute porphyrias out of which first 2 which I discussed does not have photosensitivity and the rest 2 will have photosensitivity. Now, let us see some chronic porphyrias which, uh, which also can come with the photosensitivity, but will not be very much disturbing to the patient. So, congenital erythropoietic porphyria which is the defect in uroporphyrinogen 3 synthase and there will be accumulation of hydroxy methyl bilane and uh, that leads to congenital erythropoietic porphyria. Next is uroporphyrinogen uh, decarboxylase enzyme and is defective it will lead to porphyria cutanea tarda it again comes with the skin manifestation it is again a chronic porphyria. Then comes the erythropoietic protoporphyria wherein the enzyme ferrochelatase is defective and uh, there will be accumulation of protoporphyrin 9. And uh, one of the category of this uh, porphyria which does not have photosensitivity and which does not fall under the acute categories X linked dominant uh, ALA uh, protoporphyria, ALA synthase deficiency. Again, there will be accumulation of succinyl CoA and uh, that will not cause any problem at all because the absolutely uh, the EM synthesis not yet started here. Now, once you understand different uh, category of porphyria, we have to know how they are managed. So, as I mentioned high carbohydrates for some reason are known to inhibit heme synthesis. So, this knowledge has been exploited and a patient with the porphyrias are told to take high carbohydrate diet and sometimes during acute attack of porphyrias to alleviate the symptoms they can be given 10 percent dextrose infusion which may help them to reduce the mani uh, uh, manifestation by suppressing heme synthesis. Next important treatment which has been given for because this being a most of them being a congenital deficiencies of the enzyme system 
there is nothing can be done other than gene therapy. So, only way we can try treatment is suppressing heme synthesis. So, uh, uh, ALA synthase which I mentioned in the previous slide, ALA synthase is one of the key regulatory enzyme for this entire pathway which is under tight genetic regulation through transcription as well as by the feedback inhibition from the heme. This knowledge of a feedback inhibition of ALA synthase by the heme has been exploited wherein a patient with the porphyrias we can give hematin or heme arginate which can successively inhibit or suppress the action of ALA synthase that leading to therapeutic benefit. So, so far we have discussed about congenital porphyria. During my initial discussion, I also mentioned something called acquired porphyrias. This acquired porphyria is nothing but some kind of poison or an accidental ingestion of lead which can lead to inhibition of ALA synthase that is leading to porphyria like manifestations is called as acquired porphyria. So, uh, uh, zinc is required for two enzymes that is ALA dehydratase and uh, ferrochelatase. So, what happens is whenever there is a deficient uh, uh, lead consumed either because of your professional exposure like a painter or maybe because of uh, a small kid biting onto a toys painted uh, which has a lead in it. So, that can happen and uh, sometimes because of accidental consumption of water which is contaminated with the lead, all these can inhibit the enzyme ALA dehydratase and ferrochelatase and that why can cause porphyria and this kind of porphyria unlike the congenital one if it is diagnosed can be effectively treated by removing the lead as a source of poison and the patient can become completely normal. So, one more important uh, word of caution with respect to patient suffering from porphyria is the some drugs which are metabolized by heme enzymes especially cytochromes in our microsomal system or in our mitochondria, they sometimes get activated or they get induced whenever you take a drug especially a drug like barbiturate. Barbiturate is a drug uh, given for epilepsy and you know that uh, drugs like this are given for 3 to 5 years. So, a chronic exposure to a drug like this can induce the formation of heme in our body. So, that will unwanted if the person is having a porphyria, it unwantedly stimulate the pathway and leads to more and more porphyrin por formation and it can precipitate the attack and may become more severe. So, like alcohol also similarly is metabolized by microsomal enzymes requiring heme and that also can precipitate a attack of porphyrias. So, the message is if at all the person is having porphyria, he has to avoid alcohol intake and he should be careful if you taking any medications which can precipitate porphyria attack. Okay, let us now study this uh, porphyria, acquired porphyria with a typical case presentation. Let us now read this case, 51 years painter presented to his general practitioner with the four week history of abdominal cramps, nausea, constipation, headaches, intermittent dizziness, 
parastasia that is abnormal sensation and weakness of hands. As you can see here, the symptoms does not point to a specific organ system, they are very vague and non-specific. This itself is a first clue to the clinician and there is a very clear indication that patient is a uh, professionally a painter that is a second clue to think that he may be suffering from a different kind of disorder rather than any organ system problems. So, when the doctor did the physical examination as I mentioned earlier everything was unremarkable that means none of the systems of his body had any problem. Even if you do neurological examination in this case also turns out to be a normal that means none of the tests were positive. That is the third clue for a doctor that it is not a related to any systemic disorder. Now, he has to when the doctor feels none of the examinations are abnormal he has to rely on laboratory test. So, what he has done? So, he has done hemoglobin. The only clue for him is hemoglobin was very less. This again the first clue because usually in males hemoglobin is very all the time. Ladies suffer more often with anemia than the male uh, female uh, males. Males usually hemoglobin will be always uh, more than 10. Whenever the hemoglobin falls very low, there is a clear indication something is not going fine. Then of course, the, the mean cost per volume uh, was not very specific which is normal and uh, white blood cell count was also within normal limits. There is no infection that means there is no infection. Platelet count was also very much within normal limits that means again not related to the platelets. And, uh, liver function test and electrolytes were also normal. So, when you have a such a disturbing symptoms and uh, except for hemoglobin most of the lab reports appears to be normal. And when he did the peripheral smear a simple test there is a very unique finding the doctor observed. You can see there is a small uh, uh, violet dots in his RBC. These are the typical pathognomonic feature of lead poisoning. They are called basophilic stippling in RBC. This was a very clear indication of lead poisoning. Further, he has taken an x-ray and you can see here there is one dark uh, color deposition at the metaphyseal region these are called as lead lines. This is a typical feature of lead poisoning. So, now I already explained what is your probable diagnosis. So, it is very obvious that it is a typical case of acquired porphyria. So, what are the that is our assumption still now we do not have any proof. So, what are the test you can perform in this case. Of course, you can do serum or blood lead levels. Erythrocyte zinc protoporphyrin is one of the very useful test. Wherever there is a ineffective erythropoiesis, protoporphyrins, nothing but the precursor of heme synthesis, get accumulated in the RBC and their measure is a very good indicator of any porphyrias not only acquired. Urinary ALA synthase because you know that the enzyme lead will inhibit the enzyme ALA dehydratase the only substance that can be accumulated in this patient is ALA. The presence of ALA in the urine confirms the diagnosis. And of course, if you have any means to do the enzyme activity, you can always do ALA 
dehydratase enzyme. I hope uh, you have understood the concept about uh, heme uh, synthesis, the enzyme systems and the defect of this enzymes may lead to disorders called as porphyrias which can be either congenital or acquired and uh, uh, which can also present with the acute type, chronic type or cutaneous type and uh, if it is acquired predominantly it is because of lead poisoning, if it is diagnosed can be completely cured and also you I hope you have understood the knowledge about the regulation of heme synthesis and the suppression of the enzymes of heme synthesis by feedback inhibition which can help in treatment of porphyrias. Thank you for your attention.